All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. And today we are gonna be talking about the details for the upcoming Int Kid Buu Extreme Z Awakening and also doing a little assessment slash analysis of how good this EZA actually is. Now, before we get into the Extreme Z Awakening details, let's talk about what he does right now before the EZA so it's easier for you guys to compare the two. Okay, so starting with his old leader skill, or I guess his current leader skill, it's extreme int types Q plus 1, or sorry, Q plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 120%, or super int types Q plus 1, HP, attack, and defense plus 50%. Super attack causes immense damage and recovers 12% HP, and his passive is attack plus 100%, plus attack plus 70%, when HP is 30% or above, links, Majin, Brutal Beatdown, More Than Meets the Eye, Big Bad Bosses, Infinite Regeneration, The Wall Standing Tall, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Resurrected Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, Transformation Boost, Artificial Life Forms, and Majin Power. As far as his stats go, before the EZA, at Rainbow Status, he has 15,800 attack, 16,875 HP, and 9,600 and 88 defense. So overall, I would say before the EZA, Int Kid Buu definitely had some good qualities. He had some good things going for him, like that 12% HP recovery was really nice, and he got a ton of attack on his passive, which helped him hit pretty damn hard, at least for when he first came out. Unfortunately, by today's standards, it's not that impressive, but when he first dropped, he was definitely one of if not the hardest hitting unit in the game um so yeah some good things but he also had some pretty big problems some glaring issues that just made people straight up not want to run him ever uh, especially over the easy a fizz kid boo right but that being said i do think that the extreme z awakening pretty much addressed all of the problems he had and just overall made him a much much better unit which obviously is the point of an EZA so let's pop over to the extreme Z awaken tab here and start with his EZA details leader skill extreme int types Q plus 3 HP attack and defense plus 130 percent super int types Q plus 3 HP attack and defense plus 90 percent super attack raises attack and defense for one turn causes immense damage and recovers 12 percent HP and this is a 30 percent boost and of course, this part stays exactly the same, but this part is brand new. And his passive is attack plus 100% plus an additional attack and defense plus 70% when HP is 30% or more. Majin Power Category Extreme Class Allies Q plus 1 when HP is 50% or more. And Extreme Class Allies Q plus 1 when HP is 70% or more. Links stay the same, categories stay the same, but his stats do get a pretty significant boost. So after the EZA, at rainbow status, he will have 18,673 attack, 20,033 HP, and 10,935 defense. So that's about a 3,000 increase to attack, just under, but yeah, really, really huge boost right there. And roughly 1.2K increase in defense, and the HP also goes up by about 3,000 or so. Not really a huge deal, but um, it does help your team, you know, have overall more HP, which will help you survive better, right? So, um, yeah, like I said, there were some big issues with the card before that the EZA does address. Number one, the defense. You know, pre-EZA, he had no defense to speak of, nothing on the passive, uh, not raising defense on super attack. So while he hit pretty hard, it was definitely a glass cannon because he was also taking a lot of damage. Now, with the EZA, he's raising defense on the super and he's also getting an additional 70% defense on his passive when HP is 30% or more. And the second issue was uh, key, right? Before the EZA, he was not getting any key on the passive and also the links, I mean, at least before the link update, we're not giving him any key either. So when he first dropped and for a couple of years, he was just, you know, like he was just not able to get his super attack consistently, which was a big issue, especially when most units these days are able to get their super attack like all the time, pretty much every single turn. 
um i think that was a big issue or a big reason why a lot of people just didn't want to run him because it's no fun to you know half the time not even get a super attack and do normals right so uh that's also something that's addressed by this uh eza where he's giving majin power extreme class key plus one and then extreme class allies overall key plus one when above 70 percent hp i don't love the hp restrictions to be honest but i understand why it's there um, and if you think about it, if you're running a full boot team or a mostly boot team for anybody that's run a team like that, you'll understand that this team um, usually is at full HP or very close to because most of the units in it are able to heal you, right? Like boot tanks, kid boo, uh, super boo, so on and so forth. All these units are recovering on super attack or passive. So the last time I used a full boot team, I don't think I fell below 80% HP for the entire fight, and this was on the newest Infinite Dragon Ball History event, right? So, even though there is an HP restriction, even though it's kind of annoying, um, like I said, you're going to be getting this passive pretty often with a mostly or full boo team, so I wouldn't be too concerned about that. And uh, he's giving this to himself, but also to the rest of the rotation. So, let's say you're running a you know Majin Power team, or a full boot team where not everybody has uh, level 10 Majin links, so you're not getting that key plus two for everybody, he's gonna still help with the key issues because he's giving everybody else some extra key as well, right? So the two biggest problems with this card have been fully addressed defense as well as uh, key. And offensively, he is still an absolute monster, even by today's standards. In fact, let's pop over to Dokkan Wiki here, where Noob Legend has been so kind to uh, provide us with some calculations, so big shout out to him. And as you can see, Int Kid Boo's attack per turn post Extreme Z Awakening with no supports is 6.6, .6, almost 6.7 million, and with a 50% support, it goes up to 7.9, almost 8 million attack per turn. And for defense, under a 170% lead, before super attack, 122,689. After super attack, 161,704. So uh, yeah, he's really, really good, guys. Offensively, he's gonna be in the top 10, I believe. I'm like 99% sure he's in the top 10 of hardest hitting TURs in the game. Maybe like somewhere around top five, actually. And defensively, even though he's not gonna be the best tank out there, he's gonna be very respectable, very serviceable, uh, able to take some hits, which he wasn't able to do before, you know, the Extreme Z Awakening happened, and uh, I just think he's an incredible EZA, guys. Um, top tier, you know, TUR on the game now, uh, from, you know, a unit that basically nobody used, and now there's a reason to actually run him over the Fizz Kid Boo. The Fizz Kid Boo obviously is one of the best supports in the game, and if you want a good support, he's still the one to go for. But if you want someone that can do some tanking, or at least a lot more tanking the Fizz Kid, than, the, than the Fizz Kid Boo can do, and also provide you with much more offensive firepower, then you would definitely run the Int Kid Boo over the Fizz one. And uh, that's the EZA, guys. There's not much else to say. My overall assessment of this EZA is uh, it's awesome. It's amazing. He is absolutely, I don't want to say busted, but he's definitely a monster definitely a monster rightfully so because kid boo um should be a monster right just for the character itself i wish we got a new kid boo to be honest i wish we got an lr during the worldwide celebration but since we can't get that right now i think it's eventually gonna happen of course i think it's gonna be you know a new banner in a couple months on jp probably but for the time being uh, maybe not a couple months maybe sometime next year but anyways we should be getting an lr kid boo at some point but in the meantime I'll take this very, very good Extreme Z Awakening. Um, I have no problems with it. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about it, but I am very much satisfied. I think it's extremely, extremely good. Um, I don't think he's actually as good as the AGL Super 17, just because of the, um, you know, not lack of defense, but in comparison, the 17 is definitely much tankier while able to you know, output similar damage numbers. So I think the Super 17 is still better, but this dude definitely holds his own. Okay, he's definitely very impressive. So there you go, guys. That is today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Look forward to the Int Kid Boo Extreme Z Awakening dropping on JP very soon. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see when it comes to 
global. I have no idea now because the EZAs are all over the place. We're still missing the Saiyan girls, uh, Kaelin Khalifla, and also Super 17, Super Saiyan 3 Broly. So uh, it's hard to say what you know global is going to do as far as these EZAs go, but hopefully it's sooner than later. And that's all I got to say. Thank you guys once again for watching. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.